artsy fartsy art heads, it's time for more James Calm Report. Well, we're gonna go in here to the Paul Kasman Gallery and try to get a look at Blood Flames Revisited. Piece by Du Ho So. Specimen series stove. This is polyester fabric, an edition of three. This is a piece by Will Ryman and uh, polyurethane epoxy wood and paint. These are all a bunch of uh, bullets kind of swirling around. It's like a uh, David Budd was a painter I used to look at back in the 80s that did monochrome paintings like this. This is Daniel Joseph Martinez, Redemption of the Flesh. It's just a little headache. It's just a little bruise. The politics of the future, as urgent as the blue sky, 2006. And this is a computer controlled Animatronic cloned sculptural installation, fiberglass, animal hair over aluminum and synthetic blood. And uh, yeah, I was looking at this and actually thinking of uh, Herman Nisch and uh, the Viennese actionists. But here we've got uh, 
Instead of a bunch of Tyrolean Catholics, we've got uh, computer clones. It's by John Bach, Untitled 2011. Alice Cooper and uh, somebody's little tights. Another painting by Bill Jensen. Black Angel, White Angel for Arshel Gorky. This is by Lee Buell. Untitled Sculpture W42 2010. Stainless steel, aluminum mirror, wood, polyurethane sheet, acrylic mirror, glass beads. This exhibition and installation has all been done as an homage to an exhibition that was organized by Alexander Iolas at the Hugo Gallery in 1947. And this is from the press release. Blood Flames presented works by Arshul Gorky, Mata, Ishima Noguchi, Jean-Claude Renat, among others. Kessler's design called for an unconventional, unconventional exhibition construction wherein artworks were projected and tilted at various angles from the gallery walls to show uncommon perspectives of view. His bold ar architectural interventions dissolved the barrier between the viewer and the artwork. Well, now the action has all moved down to the other gallery. Well, now we'll take a look at the uh, installation here at the 27th Street Gallery. Well, we're going to uh, venture off the platform and uh, get a little closer view of some of these pieces. I think this is by Deborah Koss. And this piece is titled Daddy 2008. And uh, I was looking at this and sort of thinking this reminds me of a uh, Frank Stella from the late 60s it's been chopped up and wordified this uh, sculpture is by Nat Vital titled Lotus Blum 2008 stainless steel and that's nice and highly polished this is a piece by Donald Moffat Might be one of the best Alex Katz paintings I've seen in years. And this is titled Rosebud from 1967 and it's 98 by 72 inches. This is a nice painting. This is by Mitchell. Joe, Jew, titled Acropa 2010. Now I guess they're going to be having a dance performance here in a little bit, and maybe we've got some of those people showing up. It's a piece by Cindy Sherman, untitled 1994, Chrome print, 70 by 51 inches. by Kalita Hoffer, titled Villa Borghese Roma. This is 72 and a half by 87 and a half framed. Let's see what's happening in the back room. This is 
by Superflex titled Burning Car 2008. Jeez, I hope none of the flames fall down here on the straw. Take a run up the back side. It's painting by Dorothea Rockburn 2008. Three point manifold. Watercolor and Duralar stretched over canvas. And we've got an electric light installation here. This is by GT Polizzi. Well, I was going to comment that a lot of people might know Fong Bui as the publisher of the Broken Rail and is a collage artist and even a portraitist, but uh, Fong has also done a great series of, I guess what you call architectural interventions where he's gone into spaces and actually created architectural installations that are kind of like uh, stepping into a three-dimensional cubist painting. Oh, this is a piece by Linda Bangless titled The Rest 2009 Tinted Polyurethane 47 and a quarter by 45 and three quarters by 23. I kind of like the uh, translucent red polyurethane. This is a piece by Joe Zucker, Ottoman Empire 2012 watercolor and gypsum on plywood. Now, uh, we covered his opening at Mary Boone a couple of years ago where he had a whole series of these pieces and uh, I think at that time he was describing them as pieces of sheetrock that he had gritted off and uh, peeled back the paper and then uh, each one of these little grids he puts drops of watercolor to create the image and uh, this might look abstract but it could also be some kind of a rendering of an architectural form. This is by Tonga and it's untitled Iron Ceramics Porcelain Plaster Rock Crystal Glass Pearls Genuine Pearls Epoxy Resin and Cotton Glove The installation with all this straw smells good, except I just keep worrying about stepping on some uh, cow manure as I walk through here. Oh, here's our old buddy Bill Jensen. This is Images of a Floating World. Rich Red. 2004-2005, oil on linen. 20 by 26 inches. Courtesy of Chime and Reed. Nice Chris Martin painting. This is titled Red Rock 2014. Acrylic collage and glitter on canvas 88 by 77 inches. And uh, Chris has been doing a lot of glitter paintings lately. And here he's got some uh, dents. <laughs> Patched holes in the canvas that he's covered. This is by Glenn Ligon. Niggers Ain't Scared 1996. Oil stick, synthetic polymer, and graphite on linen. And uh, I always liked uh, what Glenn was doing with the 
kind of the repeated printing of the images and uh, a lot of niggers ain't scared you know what uh, I mean I like going to Zoylon land 30 by 30 inches and we'll finish off with this beautiful piece by Joanna Pousset Dart titled three part variation number three acrylic on canvas on shaped wood panels and uh, Joanna is one of the people that is really using the uh, the idea of the shaped canvas in a uh, kind of a nice organic way maybe Ron Gorchoff would be one of the only other people I know that's doing such a nice job with that idea and uh, these are beautifully uh, crafted beveled edges. So we're going to uh, maybe hang around and see if we can get some of the poetry and dance in here. Speaking strokes of colors like Alice's bow snake who refused to be constricted or in black and white or pure angelic rather hectic far in messages Freddy's multiple meaning inner items expressed in and around sound or unsettled but calm and slow instead Freddy's bow is a possibility of unknowing strong to rest a non-strong and callous meaning calamity with silver tied gloves you might like to stay closely Thank you everyone. As Khan say, from the crooked timber of humanity, nothing ever come our way. Thank you. Thank you. What's your name? My name is Evan. Evan? Evan, yeah, yeah. Thanks, Evan. Hey, no problem.